talking about boxes we did it last time uh boxes 30 and 29 today inshallah we're going to do boxes 31 and 32 hopefully we've got we'll get the time to do those boxes um inshallah so let's uh start right there and so when we did it last time we still talked about those top the top column and we said that the first one was the past tense the second one was the present future tense the third one was the imperative and the fourth one was the person that is performing the verb and of course the final one which is what we call the mustar or we call it the noun of the verb so in this situation you could see that the past of it is tafa'ala and of course we remember when we talked about it that it when we when we talk about tafa'ala it is within that rhythm and the root is always supposed to be fa'ala and right here the root was fa'kara which means to remember or think so it relates to thinking and the word tafakara. So when you add the ta on to the beginning of the root and you put a shadda on the on the ayn of the verb, then you would actually come about with a new type of meaning, with a new meaning in where that involves there's that there's that process, there's that gradual penetration in something, and here it is the gradual penetration in idea uh in going into the idea tafakkara so there's that yes it's past so make sure that you don't confuse the ta and think that okay this is a future present tense it's not it the past of it is actually tafakkara so fakkara or fakkara is the past and also tafakkara that addition of the ta is going to be adding on to that that gradual entrance in something so let's just see the pattern here for those verbs in where tafakkara tadhakkara tawakkala tabayyana tarabbasa tawalla you could see the addition of the ta and the addition of the shadda is pretty much on all those within that pattern and they would pretty much give that same type of addition in where there's a gradual entrance, there's a gradual, there's a process, and of course it is in the past tense. That's the other poor form of it. So tafakkara would mean that he had pondered, that they had pondered or he had pondered, and the future present tense would be on the pattern of yatafa'ala. Yatafa'ala and which would mean the present future tense yatafakkaru yatafakkaru meaning that the person is is um is pondering is thinking reflecting on something and that comes from the root fakara so yatafakkaru meaning that the person is pondering now it's really important to remember is that the word fakara actually carries with it a number of things the first item is remembrance in other words when we talk about remembrance you're talking about an idea that you already had in mind and then therefore you're bringing it to your mind now so it was in your mind in the in the past you had it somewhere in your mind but then you are bringing your senses to it you are right now reflecting on it so with there, that's to keep in mind when we talk about yatafakkar which would mean that there was an idea that was behind that was left in our memory and that was brought to our current time to our current understanding or to our current feeling of that idea and that's where it comes from that's why when we talk about dhikr we're talking about part of it is the visual dhikr the visual dhikr which is it a moment of uh, a moment of bringing those thoughts that you were pretty much on a um well they were pretty much they were within your subconscious mind but you were not bringing it to your sense right now you're not pen pondering in that idea right now so let's continue with the third one which is tafa'al now this is the imperative form in where you're giving an order tafa'al tafa'al 
Kar. Now you're giving an order and you're telling the person to take the moment and actually think about or reflect or ponder on a specific idea. Mutafa'il is the person that's performing that verb, which is right there. So the person that's pondering it is mutafakir, the person um, the person that is basically thinking about the idea, pondering about idea, reflecting on a specific idea. And the last one is basically the noun of the verb, which is التفكر. We're talking about the actual idea, the actual the actual thought in where you think about it. So right here, تفكر, in that situation, we're taking it back to the verb right there and we're bringing it we're making a noun uh, out of it the noun of that verb which is تفكر, reflection reflection would make it um you know adjective or adverb تفكر, that reflection that uh ponderance that part of uh, what somebody might um might actually do and stuff now let's go for the third uh, the second verb and the second verb in where Remember, we're doing the exact same type. So all of them there, except those ones. There are those where we said there were an exception in where they can have different forms, but those in general, you could see that they're pretty much the same pattern. The same pattern meaning compared to the top. All right, let's see. Tadakara. Tadakara. And tadakara is pretty much remembered, but it actually comes from dhakara. The difference between fakara and dhakara, dhakara is more remember when they're remembering something, but fakara is more when they're pondering about something, they're remembered. Well, okay, dhakara, it can be remember, meaning to mention, to mention or to bring live. And here, fakara would more that it was an idea, and they remembered it, and they were they were pretty much you know focused on that idea. So there, you could see that slight difference between um, the the two terms, and that really helps in um, noticing the difference in it. Um, uh, let's see the other part, which is yatavakaru. Uh, يتذكروا, that would be the future present tense in where the person is remembering. Now, it's really important to mention is that ذَكَرَ in the Quranic terms, it's not necessarily only in one side. It will, it will relate to the oral remembrance, meaning that the person is literally ذَكَرَ يَذْكُرْ, meaning that the person is orally mentioning. All right? And it could also mean ذكرا can also come to mean that the person remembered because they remembered something and it can also mean um, it can also mean that the person himself or herself they took a moment of reflecting on that particular idea so many times these two terms they can correlate to one another so يتذكر, um again whether you're talking about oral remembrance or whether you're speaking about ponderance in an idea, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much very similar and it can come. So how do I know if in the Quran this is talking about oral remembrance or whether this is talking about, whether this is talking about, you know, an idea that came to me, you're pretty much going to look into the context and tethak تذكر is the imperative form you're telling the person to remember or um, to remember or if we're talking about a per we're talking about saying meaning the other side of it remember when we're talking about تذكر or um, تذكر we're talking about the oral side of it so the oral side of it would be أذكر أذكر and well it can also be the the remember the memory the memory part of it as well. So تذكر would be the 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 تذكر would be the imperative form of the verb um, تذكر. The person متذكر متذكر as in متفعل متفكر متوكل. I forgot the lamb here. متبين متربص متولن. All these you could see that there is a kasra on the ayn of the verb and there's the addition, um, the addition of the meme 
to mean that this is talking about the person performing that. So mutadakir is the person that's rem remembering. Mutawakkil is the person that's performing tawakkul, which is um, trusting. Trusting or, yeah, trusting, depending on. All right, now let's continue. Mutadakir, the person. Tadakir. Kur is the actual noun of the verb masdar in where we're talking about remembrance. Remembrance. All right, let's move on. Well, just give me a, just a little bit of time to drink water. All right, let's continue. Tawakkala. Tawakkala in where we can see. You know, I wonder if that's actually right. Because they put right there that fakkara uh, it appeared 17 times i actually totally doubt that so i'm just going to put fakkara on okay i'm going to my quran uh, app and actually see how many it occurred we're just going to look at the roots so they're actually right it appeared 18 times well let's see tadakkara dhakara in the roots wow dhakara Dhakara in the Quran, the root of it appeared 219, 92 times. 292 times. Dhakara. Well, let's see. Fakara and how many times we're getting. Fakara, it appeared 18 times. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that. All right, so now we look at that. Let's see. Wakala. Wakala, and how many times does it appear? 556 times. Uh, I doubt that. Because the way that no it the that app didn't actually get me the right number. All right, so let's move on right here. And tawakkala, tawakkala would mean to depend, to want to put one's trust in something. Tawakkal. Now tawakkal meaning that they that they had to put a trust in someone. So of course in the past tense they put the trust meaning in the past. All right, yatawakkalu, where the person is putting trust, depending on, depending on. So this is the future present tense right there. And of course, then we're talking about tawakkal. Now there's the imperative form, in, uh, uh, imperative form in where you're telling him, well, you need to depend on tawakkal. You're ask, actually um, forcing him to do so. You're asking him to do so. Mutawakkil. I know there's a missing lamb right there, so let's add it. Mutawakkil is the person, is the person that is trusting or depending. Tawakkul is the actual dependence on someone or trust in someone. Tabayyana. Tabayyana is the past tense of bayana. Now, bayana would mean to clarify or clarified to be more accurate. Tabayana, remember that ta and plus that shadda on the verb would tell me there is that gradual process that is taking place. And the gradual process that's taking place is that things were slowly starting to clarify, starting to, you know, that murkiness is starting to go away. And then and gradually it became clear uh, that such an such matter is. So tabayyana. Tabayyana, meaning this is in the past in where things were cleared up and it was apparent, apparent and it became it became clear. So this is the past tense. Yatabayyanu, the present um yatabayyanu, meaning it would be uh well it is clearing and clearing and things are you know are um are becoming um uh, beca becoming apparent tabayyan meaning you're asking the person it's an imperative form right there you're asking the person to be aware to tabayyan be aware um let things be clear to you tabayyan all right no, no investigate all right mutabayyan is the person mutabayyan meaning the person that is investigating or the person that it is clear to them and now they can see it tabayyun uh, or tibyan tibyan or ta, well tibyan um would mean when um which is the actual noun of the verb in where um tibyan and where things are cleared up and what it and how it's clear now let's go on for the other part which is tarabbasa this is the past tense of it tarabbasa now 
التربص التربص actually comes from uh, in where there is that tentative watching that person is is um, tentatively watching and waiting for an opportunity to do some to do something so tarabbus in where their tarabbasa is in the past they were tentatively awaiting they were closely watching they were in another word in english scrutinizing so tarabbasa is scrutinizing so here they're scrutinizing something to scrutinize something um uh, scrutinized is in the past scrutinizing you're asking him to scrutinize to look closely into that matter and of course mutarabbis is the person that is scrutinizing uh is scrutinizing and let's see um mutarabbus is tarabbus is the actual can you actually say scrutinization in english you know i have to look that up yep i'm not an english literature specialist and um so something to look up tarabbus is where the actual scrutiny that you might do yes yeah, scrutiny there you go got the word scrutiny yeah sometimes you could you would have to put it in a sentence to get the word out all right so let's go ahead yeah scrutiny there you go so tarabbus is scrutiny not scrutinization. There's no such word. Probably. I would have to look it up. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes you could just get carried away with, oh, how does that that conjugation of that verb actually go? I did learn French, and I think French was easier than English, but tawalla, tawalla in where... Now, tawalla is a really important word because it comes from the root waliya. And waliya would many times come to mean... Um, that you're administering, that you are in authority, and walia could also mean to, well, yeah, if you're administering, you are also in authority. You're also in authority. So, tawalla would mean also, um, you know, to put somebody in authority. Tawalla would mean, and that's why when we're talking about walaya or when we're talking about الولاية would mean put somebody in authority and here تولى, you're taking somebody as your authority you're taking some uh, some area as your place of your to be your place of determination yeah to be your place of determination wow yep so تولى, and this is why when for a Muslim when you say um, that you take الولاية لله and you take wali Allah, that my wali is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually saying my place of determination is actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My place of determination, whether it determines right or wrong, or whether it determines my life, or whether it determines how I react to things, is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, tawalla, and it, sometimes it can be human as well, but here, you know, for a mu'min, for a believer, you would actually have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your wala'i. So here, tawalla, let's go for the, the object of the verb, at least, the, you know, the subjective understanding of the verb and actually see it right there. So tawalla would mean that the person, uh, the person took a certain person as, or tawalla, whatever they are taking as their administrator, as their, as their lord, it can be human or otherwise, as their lord or as their place of determination, their place of victory. Yatawalla, same thing, it's the present tense of that. Tawalla, you're telling him, well, you know, tawalla, that who to take as a place of determination or a place of victory. Mutawallin is the actual person that is, that is taking a certain area as a place of administration, the person himself. There's actually a number of there are actually a number of different masadir for this one. There's al uh, there's also al wilaya, and there are a number of different uh, there are a number of different masadir for that for that verb in where it would mean the actual the actual action of taking as a person as your administrator. So that's why when we look at the ayah, al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minatu, 
بعضهم أولياء بعض. It actually comes from it as well. أولياء بعض in where they are. Can we translate it as they uh, they they help each other determine what's right? They administer one one another. They support one another. So remember, it depends on the context. But this is really important to mention because when we're talking about when we're talking about scrutinizing that ayah, al mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya ubad. So what does awliya here mean? That believing men and believing women are awliya. So it comes to this verb waliya in where there there's that administration, there's that support, there's that. The determination that they support one another on. So they don't necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily that there's one side that's ruling or one side that's determining the other side is just implementing. But it's actually that bilateral work, teamwork that they actually do with one another. This is really important. in the So that we understand when we talk about when we talk about uh, the administration of whether we're talking about female male administration or when we're talking about how the household and this is really important because if we don't understand the the actual words and the verbs themselves you're really not going to understand how to how to translate that and make sure that you free yourself from all those different indoctrinations that a lot of the different the different lobbies might carry so here we go let's go on with the wafa the wafa Right, tawaffa means that the person died. And uh, tawaffa, the person died. All right, and it can also mean fulfilled. So the person fulfilled his life, therefore he died. All right, so tawaffa, and to make here tawaffa, and to receive in full. And this is yet tawaffa, the person is receiving in full. All right, the person is receiving in full and also is dying. Tawaffa, tawaffa, meaning, by the way, um, to, maybe I should modify that. Instead of saying to receive in full, let me um, modify and say tawaffa in where you're completing. So tawaffa, you're asking him to complete. Mutawaffin is the actual person that completed his life, which is the actual dead person, the deceased. Right, tawaf, uh, tawafin, tawafin, and also mutawafa, etc. Mutawafa, the person that died, uh, with the noun of the verb, and tawafin, which is the actual wafa. There's also wafa, wafa, which means, or wafa, which would mean, uh, the completion, which would mean, uh, which would mean that the per wafa. Okay, and which would mean that completion, that, um, what, what is another word for it, which is the, it, that, what do you say when, when you fulfill something? There you go, that's the word, fulfill. They fulfill something. So here, this also can become to fulfill. So here, instead of to receive in full, it's to fulfill. Um, all right, now let's go ahead. Now, this is a very important word because this is really common in the Quran, which is the passive voice. When you say the passive voice, that would mean that the person is the person that did the verb that did the action is not mentioned. It's 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 not mentioned within that sentence. Sometimes we can understand the, through the context who the person that did that verb is, but it's really important to keep in mind that this is commonly used in the Qur'an as the passive voice. So let's see what we're talking about here. So this is تفعل, or the, the first, the passive voice is تفعل, تفعل, يتفعل, and متفعل. So now this is this is going up to those ones. So mutafa'al, mutawallin, mutarabbis, um, uh, mutarabbis or mutawallin, which would mean that there is also that the person that's actually doing that verb is pretty much unknown to us. So it, it just left it that or even the person that it was done on to. All right. Uh, let's see the other forms. Now we're looking at um, these two in where 
Now remember, الزيادة في المعاني في المباني زيادة في المعاني. Remember, in Arabi, زيادة في المباني. Whenever you add any addition, whoops, whenever you add any addition to the verb, that would actually mean you're adding a meaning. If you're adding any addition to the actual conjugation, that would actually mean you're adding a new meaning to it. So let's see right here when we're looking at tabaraka. The tabaraka, it comes from the form of tafa'ala. This is not the verb. The verb is baraka. All right, that's the verb. But here, that type of conjugation, where it sounds like the pattern tafa'ala, would mean that something is exalted. There's that, there's the, um, that ta and there's the a that is added to it. So tasa'ala, but you want to remember one thing is that when we're talking about tabaraka, it's it's like it is actually different than tasa'ala because tabaraka is only mentioned when it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say uh you cannot say it about any any uh tabaraka fulan or etc. You want to specify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya tabarak it tabarak again comes from the baraka, which means bless. Yatabarak, that the person is getting the blessing. Yatabarak, the person is getting the blessing. Whether, you know, we agree or disagree with what they're trying to get the blessing from, but this is what they're actually doing. So if the person, I don't know, they put, regardless of whether we consider it shirk or not, but this is the verb itself and what it means. So let's say the person, you know, they put their hands on a stone or whatever and they started they started thinking that they can somehow uh, they can somehow get the inspiration or get some kind of a blessing through that person or that thing that they regarded holy that is it tabarruk it tabarruk and here yatabarak in where the person is actually trying to get some kind of a some kind of a connection a blessing uh, through that uh, through that item regardless of what we call it shirk or not. So tabarak, 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 it means that you, now here, it means that you are getting the blessing. You are getting the blessing. And of course, tabaraka, uh, the tabaraka here, we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Mutabarik, the person that is trying to get that baraka. Mutabarik. And tabaruk, tabaruk is the actual the actual process of trying to get the blessing, etc. And of course comes from it other um, nouns of those verbs, baraka, which means blessing itself. All right, which means blessing itself. And of course the issue of blessing, that's a whole thing in aqidah. Can we get a blessing or can I ask the blessing of somebody, a scholar or whatever, um, can we do that? That's that's a whole different field um, to talk about. Now, tasa'ala, now this is really important because in Arabi, right, although it doesn't probably apply very much here, but when you add the ta and the a and you get the form of tafa'ala, you are going to keep in mind that there is a bilateral, there's a bilateral um relationship here and where there's more than one person that is involved that is involved so tasa'ala in where the person is questioning there's more than one thing that is involved the the root is sa'ala which means to ask tasa'ala in where the person is is questioning the person is asking the, there's that there's that moment in where tasa'al, you know, he's questioning, he's wondering, he's not really sure. Yatasa'alu, in where the person is, uh, well, this one is past. Tasa'ala, questioned. Yatasa'alu, questioning. Tasa'al, question. Uh, well, you're asking him to question and um, and to ponder. Well, one thing I would like to say is that for the word tasa'ala, it can mean the issue of questioning and it can also mean wondering. Okay, so where you're not necessarily wanting an answer, but you are, you are here, you know, wondering, you're, you're, you're not asking for a specific answer, 
but you are here taking a moment to reflect on it and just, you know, you're not really sure about something, you're in doubt about something, and therefore you're you're open to different you're open to different um, hypotheses in this situation. Mutasel um, is the person. Again, this is the person. This is all of it is the person. So the person that is questioning. Tasel is the actual, you know, questioning the itself, the the process of questioning, the questioning itself that you might actually um, do. Now, uh, box thirty-two. Hopefully this is going to be the last one. So we're going to go really quick because it's um, it's pretty pretty much straightforward. So let's see. If ta'ala, if ta'ilu, if ta'il, muf ta'il, if ta'il. Right. Those are those are going to be the patterns. If ta'il, if ta'lif, or if ta'lafa. Actually, if ta'ala, if ta'lafa, if ta'ba, if ta'khada. Ittaqa, iftara. Now notice those are naqis, meaning that they actually have the last letter of it is actually is actually a harf illa, which would mean that it's a vowel at the end. So we're going to leave these together. All right. So these are going to be one category, and these are going to be one category. And the reason why those are going to be one category because remember the last verb, the last letter is actually harf which may mean that it is naqas or it is it is um, an, uh, an irregular verb. So let's see right here. Ikhtalafa, ittaba'a, ittakhada. Let's see those ones, which which would mean ikhtalafa, to differ. To differ, that the person differed on a specific matter. And ittaba'a, followed. Ittakhada, ittakhada, adopted. Ittakhada or took. Now, when we say ittakhada, adopted, it can be a path. It doesn't, you don't say adopted a child as ittakhada because that would mean to adopt the child um, would mean that tabanna. Uh, that's a different story. So ittakhada would mean adopt an idea usually or adopt a path or adopt, a, you know, a specific lifestyle. So ittakhada or an, an idea or a decision. All right. So ittaba'a, ikhtalafa, and ittakhada. You see, yakhtalifu. Ikhtalafa, we said um, to differ. So dif differing and yattabi'u, following, yattakhidhu, yattakhidhu, taking or adopting. So right here, ittaba'a, following. Here, yattabi'u, following. And yattakhidhu would mean adopting. Now let's go for the imperative form in where ikhtalif, you're asking him to differ. Ittabi, you're asking him to follow. Ittakhid, you're asking him to adopt. Adopt. So let's do it again. Ikhtalifa, to differ. Ittaba'a, follow. Ittakhada, um, to adopt. So here, mukhtalif, different. The per that is different, meaning the person different. The person is different. Ittaba'a, the uh, muttaba'a, the person is following because this means to follow. Followed. Ittakhada, muttakhid, adopted, or the person himself is adopting, actually adopting. Muttakhid. And ikhtilaf, difference. Ikhtilaf is difference. Ittiba' is, you know, following or ittiba'. So when we say sharia, ittiba' means it's an actual, well, you you actually follow it. You don't, when we say sharia is ittiba' in where it's about following, it's a, it's about adhering to, um, to the practice of Islam. And it's not about, it's not about you inventing your way. All right, so ittiba'a, you're following, you're, you're adhering to a lifestyle. Ittakhadha, ittikhadh, ittakhadha, ittikhadh meaning the adoption. Adoption, again, this is not relating to child adoption. Child adoption is tabanni, 
All right, child adoption is tabanni. This is adopting an idea. So just to make sure that we don't confuse it and think, yeah, I'm going to attakhiv, uh, you know, I'm going to attakhiv uh, a son or a daughter, even though you can't say attakhiv fulan, whatever, you know, but this is not the term for it. Let's see right there, or it's 2.20. So, well, uh, I'm sorry, guys, we were late, but um, we'll at least finish up to here, inshallah, and then we're finished. Ittaqa, 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 and actually comes from taqiyya. And taqiyya would mean that would mean that the person put a barrier. Somehow they put a barrier to protect them. So they're taking a shield. They're taking a shield. So ittaqa would mean that the person took a shield to protect themselves. Yattaqi, yattaqi, that the person is protecting himself or shielding himself. Ittaqi, you're asking him to shield and protect himself. Muttaqin is the person that is shielding, protecting himself. Ittiqa is the actual process of taking a shield taking a shield now comes from it is the word taqwa and that's why you know in english it doesn't really give it the meaning when you say taqwa to actually say fear is not really accurate because the word taqwa comes from the root taqiyya which means to shield or shielded but taqwa in order to put it in um in a uh, religious format many times instead of saying shield and where it can be very ambiguous and not really clear they will say taqwa to mean um, that the person had a shield in fear of in fear of the consequences of god almighty's god almighty's discontent over that person so you know and it could be it could also be deep love so the reason why you would have that shield away from wronghood is because you fear that it might lead to um to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's discontent so that's why when we talk about taqwa it can actually mean deep love and also deep fear so you love deeply that you fear that the that the one that might you know look over this is going to be discontent over the action so let's move on iftara iftara and it comes from the root fariya and iftara would mean the uh, fariya would mean that the person in uh, created a blasphemy in other words fabricated a lie and here iftara that the person lied or fabricated but one thing is it's important that it's different than kathaba because kathaba means lied but iftara actually made up a lie in other words they were they well they were not only aware of it but they plotted to make that lie they they uh they accused iftara they accused they fabricated them yaftari Yaftari in where the person is fabricating a lie. Iftari, iftari would mean you're asking him to make a lie. Please do not do that. Muftarin is the person that is fabricating the lie. Iftira is the actual um, fabricated accusation. Fabricated accusation. And let's move on. Ihtada. Ihtada comes from Hadiya. Hadiya, which would mean to find guidance. So the person Hadiya, that would be the root. Ihtada would mean that the person took an effort. And this is really important, by the way, is that for all of these, whenever you see that a, uh, that, that alif uh, right there with the ta, would mean that there was an effort to make such a thing happen. So there was an effort to put the difference there was an effort to put it in to make that shield there was an effort to fabricate a lie there was an effort to reach guidance there was an effort to reach the destination so you could see that there was an effort in all of them whenever you have the a eh and the ta in a verb that means that there was an actual effort that was put 
So right here, ihtada, that the person put an effort to find guidance, and therefore the person ihtada, they landed on guidance. Ihtada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all guidance. Yahtadi, the person is seeking guidance, seeking guidance. Ihtadi, you're actually asking him to seek guidance. Muhtadin is the person that's guided. Ihtida is guidance itself or hadi. Or hadi or hidayah. Hidayah is also one of those in where it is the noun of the verb of hadiya and it's guidance. Hidayah is guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to all of us. And give us also that consistency on Hidayah because you can find guidance, but then you may not, not you may not be given the you may not be given the consistency and determination to put it into practice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that actual Hidayah and make us from those that will die on Hidayah. Ibtari or ibtagha ibtagha baghiya is the root now baghiya or bagha is the root so here ibtagha you're actually saying that the person seeked baghiya or seeked or wanted really ibtagha ibtagha that they had seeked and ibtagha would meaning that they put an effort to seek Yabtari, yabtari, meaning that they are wanting or seeking. Ibtari, you're asking him to seek. Ibtari, mubtarin, mubtarin, the person that is seeking. Ibtira, the reason for their seek. Ibtira, the reason for their seek. And that's, and bughya, and bughya. Bughya is basically the 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 reason for your seek. Yeah, no, no, wait a minute. Bughya talib When you say Bughya talib like it is the actual destination. No, no, no. Wait. Al uh, Bughya is in this situation would be your aim. That's the word. Al Bughya would be your aim. Sorry, you guys. I have to sometimes think it out. How can I say it? So Al Bughya would be the aim would be the aim. All right, so this is it. You know, in qalaba intaha. Why don't we finish at intaha? In qalaba, I know you're like, wait a minute, why do we have to do the same exact thing every single time? In fa'ala comes from the root fa'ala. But here's one thing, is that whenever you add an alif noon onto any verb, that means there's force put in it. In qalaba, the root is qalaba. In qalaba, there was a root, there was a force that led to something to flip. So in qalaba would mean that there was a force that made it flip because qalaba would mean flip in qalaba that there was a force to make it flip. Yan qalibu, yan qalibu meaning it is flipping. In qalab you're asking him to flip. Mun qalib it's basically that um uh that mun qalib is basically that um that flipping and in qilab in qilab is the actual flipping, but right now it, you know, it is more commonly used in our common time to mean coup, all right, uh, coup meaning the political coup, or actually military coup. All right, um, let's see intaha, intaha, and that would be the end of our last words, intaha meaning um, ended, and it comes from naha, naha, in where naha, it's like it, uh, terminated, terminated. So here, intaha, intaha would mean it was terminated. Intaha terminated. Yentahi terminating. Intahi, you're telling him to terminate. Muntahin terminating. Term terminator. Okay, now we're thinking of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Intaha. Sorry, guys. Muntahin is basically the terminator, the person that's terminating. Intaha. Is um intiha is basically the ending intiha and this is the ending of today. Oh actually we still have the evolution of Muslim thinking in three hours. 
or less. All right, so in the end, this is the end of today. I am so excited because, let, let me just see. I think, wow, mashallah, we almost passed it. We only have two pages left, which means two days left, inshallah. All right, so hopefully, inshallah, we'll get to the actual stuff. I am so excited, and jazakumullah khairan, everyone. Let's see if there's anybody that has any questions. Be happy to answer them. I hope they're straightforward. Uh, not the questions, but I hope the lecture was straightforward. All right, so assalamu alaikum, everyone, and jazakumullah khairan for listening.